Hello darlings, welcome back. In this week's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some 1950s dinner recipes from some of my favorite cookbooks from the 1940s to 60s. These are the perfect recipes that you can have on busy weeknights because it's something that you can put on the stove or put in the oven for a couple of hours and come back to it and it's all ready. These recipes are simple and delicious and I hope you enjoy them too. The first recipe is a ridiculously easy and delicious pie to make from an Australian cookbook from 1946. To make the fish pie, start by buttering a pie dish. I have prepared fresh breadcrumbs, which I'll be sprinkling over the sides and bottom of the dish. Prepare an onion by roughly dicing it, which will later be layered on top of the fish. Cut a lemon or two in half so there is enough for both in the pie and for serving. To make the white sauce, melt a small amount of butter in your pan, which you will then add one dessert spoonful of flour to. Stir briskly to combine. Then add one cup of milk gradually, while stirring continuously. And don't forget to add a little salt to taste. You can use any fish that you like that is suitable for baking, or even fillets of whiting. I've used rockling for this recipe and it turned out perfectly. After laying the fish in the pie dish, sprinkle chopped onion, salt and pepper, a squeeze of lemon juice, and of course, some fresh parsley from the garden. Pour the white sauce over the fish to evenly cover it and coat the top in fresh breadcrumbs with little bits of butter over the pie. Bake in a moderate oven for about one hour. I serve the pie with a garnish of fresh parsley, a lemon wedge and a side of peas. This recipe was so easy to make and despite how little ingredients there were, it is one of the tastiest and filling meals for dinner. The crispy crumbs on top really bring this dish to another level. The next recipe is a pizza loaf, which is technically just a meatloaf with layers of cheese. This is from the Better Homes and Gardens cookbook from the 1950s. This is another recipe that is so simple to make. Adding ground beef or a vegetarian substitute, chopped onion, rolled oats, Worcestershire sauce, tomato sauce, an egg, oregano, and salt and pepper. Combine all together. Slice mozzarella or use a pre-sliced version as it can be difficult to cut.
divide meat mixture into thirds. Pat down the first layer and top with mozzarella. Continue this layering, ending with the meat layer. Bake in a moderate oven for one hour. I served the meatloaf with steamed asparagus, which paired perfectly. Adding some ketchup or tomato glaze to the meatloaf would make it even more delicious. This next recipe is a favourite of mine, as I've made it quite a few times now. It is from an Australian cookbook from 1951. To make this pea soup, soak your split peas overnight in cold water. Place them into a large saucepan with water, bacon bones or rind and salt. While you slowly bring that to the boil, prepare the vegetables and grate or slice thinly. Add the onion, carrot, celery and turnip into the pot and boil slowly for 2-3 to three hours. While the soup boils, prepare the croutons by cubing bread and drizzling with olive oil, herbs, salt and pepper. Bake in a moderate oven for 20-30 to 30 minutes. I like to blend the soup with an immersion blender, as opposed to straining all the vegetables out like the recipe calls for. Once smooth, I added flour to thicken the soup, and a little bit of clove and nutmeg. The key ingredient in this delicious recipe is dried mint. It makes this go from boring old pea soup to something else. It's delicious. Serve the soup hot with lots of crunchy croutons. This is a favourite of ours and is a meal I will continue to make over and over again. The last dinner recipe is an Italian spaghetti sauce from the Better Homes and Gardens cookbook from the 1950s. Cut onion into slices and cook in hot oil until golden. Add ground beef or vegetarian substitute with garlic and brown lightly. Add tinned tomatoes, passata, canned sliced mushrooms and fresh herbs of parsley and oregano, a bay leaf, dry thyme and salt. Simmer uncovered for about two hours. When the pasta sauce is almost done, cook the spaghetti. And serve up with parmesan cheese and your favorite herbs. This recipe is hearty and delicious, which is great on a chilly winter's night.
Let me know if you try out any of these recipes. I'd love to know what you think. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye. It's doing that so well. So will. Uh.